All right, good evening. Uh, glad you can join us for our six o'clock prayer meeting. Uh, so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just doing pray, be in prayer uh, about uh, for our church and for our nation. And we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we do love you, Lord. We thank you for the blessings you give us in this life. God, we thank you so much, Lord, for Jesus and what he did for us on Calvary. God, I do pray that you'd be with uh, our church, Lord, and I pray that you would just strengthen our church. And Lord, I pray that you would watch over all that goes on here at our church. Lord, I thank you for Cornerstone. Excuse me. Lord, I thank you for Cornerstone and what uh, we do here as a church. Lord, I thank you for the ministries we have here. Lord, I thank you for the Bible shop, the bus ministry. Lord, uh, the Spanish ministry. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd be with all of those and be with the Sunday school ministry and the children's churches that goes on, Lord, and, and our visitation ministry. Lord, uh, us emailing the missionaries and, and calling our, our shut-ins and, and our folks that are sick. And Lord, I, I, all that uh, going on with the visitation ministry. And Lord, I pray uh, that you would be with uh, uh, our prayerfully our choir ministry when it gets started back up and Lord I pray that you just watch over all that we do here at Cornerstone Lord and, and Lord I pray for the ladies prayer group up top that you'd be with them the ladies that cook and, and do uh, all that for the funerals and other things Lord we're thankful for them and God I pray that you would be with <coughs> be with our uh uh, with uh, uh, Miss Linda, we thank you for her and, and her keeping up the church, Lord, and just cleaning, and, and thank you for that. And God, I do pray that you'll just be at this lesson tonight, Lord, as I, as I teach, Lord, from the book of Ecclesiastes through this uh, series of lessons, Lord, we thank you for them. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you'd guide us and direct us, Lord, and, and convict our hearts. Lord, I pray that you, if there's one out here listening that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, God, I pray that you would just uh, convict their hearts, Lord, that they'd come to know you for uh, for it's everlasting too late. God, we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, tonight we're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, number 7 and uh, verse number 20. I'm going to read... Proverbs chapter uh, 6 and verse 26 kind of sums up our lesson. The Bible says, For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 7 in verse 20 through 29, the Bible tells us, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed other others. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it? Find out find it out. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands, whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her." Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. No, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions." Reading through this, I want you to notice in verse number 26 uh, uh, that there's a statement that says in life, uh, uh, there's, that there is something in life that is more bitter than death. Now, this passage deals with the sin of adultery. God says that this experience is more bitter than death. 
Now, we must say that for the Christian, death is not bitter. It's not bitter. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13 says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. See, the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth and, and he lived a perfect sinless life. And he died on Calvary and paid our sin debt. Not only did he die, but, but he took hell for us. He was uh, separated from God the Father. God the Son was separated from God the Father and he suffered hell for us. And he was buried and rose again the third day that we may have eternal life through him. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the only way we're going to get into heaven is if we trust him as our personal savior. And if we accept him as our personal savior, as only he is the only way we're going to go to heaven. And when believers, as believers, when believers pass through the door of death, they enter into the presence of the Lord. I believe as Lazarus was carried away by the angels, so will we when we close our eyes to this life. And we will forever be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But however, uh, for the man without God, death is bitter. As bitter as death is to the man without God, uh, uh, the Bible says that there is something more bitter than death. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 20 and verse number 29, they serve as like bookends uh, to this passage of Scripture. In verse 20, the Bible says, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And verse 29 says, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. These verses remind us that man is uh, a, we are a fallen creature. See, God created us perfect in the beginning. And Adam uh, and Eve, he created perfect beings uh, without sin. And then they, uh, uh, they fell in the Garden of Eden. And they did, they rebelled against what God said. They disobeyed God. And that led to a fallen state. And we are still in a fallen state. We're a fallen man and we have a fallen nature. And we receive a new nature when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. When we put our faith in Christ uh, and receive him as our Savior, we uh, become a new creature. Now, we need the new nature in order to desire the right things. Though we have to fight with the old nature because it's still there. Our old flesh is still there on our backs. But we have a new uh, desire for things. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. We're only sinners. We're all sinners. But we as Christians are sinners saved by grace. So we need to remember that. But we need to seek the Lord for victory over the old nature. We've got to seek him, uh, get in his word. And, um, and we just need to remember that we're fallen creatures just like everybody else. We're sinners. And, and uh, we need the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and his guidance. Number one, we're going to look at the search. In verse number 23 of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, the Bible says, All this have I proved by wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Now there's something we're all doing. Uh, Solomon in this has passage of scripture, he wanted to know everything. He, he seeked out, uh, he was seeking out answers to everything, but he, he wanted to know all the answers. But he found out that he could not have perfect knowledge. Only God has perfect knowledge and Solomon couldn't have it. We're all searching for something. In this life, we are either searching for uh, some of us for significance, some of us for fame or recognition in some way, popularity. Uh, others are searching for security. Uh, that security in money, in friends, in, in a, a family, well, however they're searching for it, they're searching for uh, some kind of security, thinking, you know, if I make enough money uh, doing this, uh, then that's going to help me. I I'll be secure in that. Uh, so, but... There's a lot of people uh, that go uh, off the rails searching uh, for these things. They go wild looking for them. Uh, mankind, they're also, we're also searching for satisfaction in life. 
But we as fallen people, uh, we see how, how it is that the people go wild. Whenever they go out looking for these things, they'll go to, uh, some will go to no ends to find the riches and the fame and the fortune. And they go uh, way out of the way of the Lord and it's their own path. But the question is, have you come to realize that the only real security and satisfaction in life is Jesus Christ? He is the only thing. And, and if you haven't, man, you're headed, you are headed for self-destruction. Number two, because uh, we see in that our, our satisfaction is only in the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, the snare, the snare. Uh, Solomon had not found out everything. Now, he couldn't find out all that, but he found out an evil relationship that is more bitter than death. Uh, in verse 26, he says, I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. The man who engages in an adulterous relationship has walked into a snare. Now, he thinks he's ensnared a woman, but she has ensnared him. Her hands are as bands, like chains holding on to him. If nothing can make a man rise higher on earth than a good woman, then nothing can bring a man down so low as a woman who is not, who, who is not what God meant for her to be. Many men who were once honorable have wrecked their lives and testimonies because they're fun. Because the fun they think they're having, they turn, and it turned into something more bitter than death. You look in Proverbs. We'll flip over there to Proverbs chapter number uh, six. Proverbs, or Proverbs chapter number five. We'll begin reading in verse number five. I'm going to read a large passage of scripture here. In Proverbs five and verse number five, the Bible says, Her feet Go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction? and my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the, with the wife of of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind in pleasant row. Uh, let her breast satisfy thee at all, the, all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a, of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden uh, with the core of the, his sins. He shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Now we read all that and the thing is the man who runs after a strange woman will learn that this experience is more bitter than death. So we need to receive the warning uh, of God when we look at that. Now we've seen the search trying to search out all things, trying to know things, trying to search out satisfaction or security or whatever. Uh, our only uh, uh, satisfaction as searching for it is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we see the snare, uh, the snare of the strange woman. Also opposite goes for the strange man. Uh, now, number three, we look at the safety the safety. I want you to look in uh, verse number 26, the word escape. The word escape in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 26. Uh, 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 26, the Bible tells us, it says, And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. There is, how do we escape from the snare of adultery? How do we escape from it? The Bible says, Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her from her. Solomon learned that the only way to escape and the only place to find safety is in pleasing God. As we please God, we flee wrong things. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you hear a man uh, who falls into adultery, he did not fall with the woman first. He first fell in his walk with God. We must not allow coldness in our hearts by falling out of fellowship with God. Becoming cast about attending church and living the Christian life and can lead to a serious, that can lead to a serious fall. If we come to a point in our lives where we think, ah, it's just, it's just something that I do. It's just something uh, that I, I, you know, we talk about it as a habit or, or a tradition. It is not a tradition. Christianity shouldn't, when tr Christianity becomes a tradition or, or uh, uh, just something that you feel like you have to do, uh, boy, we need to get on an altar and pray. We really need to come to God and ask him uh, for guidance in that because we soon will fall away from the Lord in that kind of attitude. Uh, we need to, uh, uh, Christianity is a lifestyle. It is a life. It is not just about uh, coming to church on Sunday morning and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. And, and it's not even just about coming on Tuesday nights. It is about delighting and being happy in service of the Lord every day of the week. Preacher talked about it. When are we, when are we be servants of God? Every day, every hour of every day, we need to be seeking God and looking to Him because that's what leads to all of the sins uh, uh, that falls out of that. So we need to look to God and, and our safety. Our ha safety has much to do with our nearness to Christ uh, than our distance from the opposite sex. It really has to do with that. So we need to look at this. We've seen the search where we're looking for uh, uh, satisfaction in life. You need to look to Jesus. Now we see the snare. The snare is the strange woman. And we, the, the man thinks he's got a hold on the woman, but the woman has a hold on him. Uh, we need to take heed to God's warning in the Bible and learn that, hey, this relationship is more bitter than death. And then we find safety. We find the safety. Our safety is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our safety is the one who is trying, uh, is our life trying to please God, not ourselves. We look to ourselves and we're on our way to self-destruction. So we need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ and find him in that. Because uh, if not, then uh, more bitter than death. Let's bow our heads and pray. Pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this time and your word. And Lord, we just thank you for this uh, lesson tonight out of Ecclesiastes. God, help us to walk with you. Help us to walk close to you. Help us to be like you and have a mind like you and, and uh, to love others like you and have compassion like you. God, we just love you and thank you so much uh, for what you're going to do. And in Jesus' name, amen.